Hi, welcome everyone to the October 9th Disability Advisory Board meeting. I wanna welcome, everyone is here, right? So we have a quorum tonight, Abby and Michelle and Cynthia. So we're four of us out of, what are we supposed to have? Five, yeah. <laughs> we have open positions <laughs> or we six or seven. And yeah, we can have up to seven. So uh, the first item on the agenda is we're going to approve the August 14th, 2024 meeting minutes. Do I have a motion to approve? I move. I'll second. Okay, so Michelle. And All in favor, aye. All in favor, aye. Okay. Um, item two, we're just uh, discussing that we still have open positions. So if anyone is interested, you're welcome to send your resume to the LMT manager um, at lmt.org. Is it admin at lmt.org? Uh, and we would love to have you. So we have open positions and some alternate positions. So please apply if you're interested. Do we have anyone out there? No one's on the phone for any public comment. So um, we will just move along. The next item is voting access. So we have coming up on, is it November 5th? The, yes. yeah, the election is November 5th. Mm -hmm. So I know that Michelle has been kind of looking into and maybe trying to get more information out there, you know, about just polling places, you know, are they accessible, working with the uh, League of Women's Voters, mm -hmm. and also, you know, the Bucks County still also has information. So I'm just going to ask Michelle, you know, is there anything particular you wanted to bring up or, you know, make people aware of? Um, and uh, no, I mean, I was reassured um, from, oh gosh, her name's Blanken. I'm in a different brain mode right now. Um, up in Doylestown that it is the responsibility, whoever's, you know, in charge of the team to make sure that all the fire um, exits are clear, water, that kind of thing. And I just kind of reiterated, hey, you know, as a person with a disability and mobility challenges, we know what we're looking at, you know, pending four years ago, eight years ago, whatever. So she was going to pass that down and confirmed and, um, you know, maybe if there's anybody out there listening that has any concern of LMT uh, voting um, areas um, to let us know, we can forward it to the proper channels. But at this point, I think that SIL has done a lot of how to vote with the ADA um, booths and things like that. So cross fingers that we, you know, get the vote out and the folks that need it, the aging and um, people with disabilities will get out and vote if they need to. Okay, great. And so for, um, I guess we want to pass along the information that the Bucks County SIL, and that's the Center for Independent um, Living. Living. Yep. And they are actually having an open house on October 11th, and that's from one to four. And they do have a lot of information, you know, about voting, uh, you know, mm -hmm. whether you're voting for the first time or just concerns or you just want to learn how to vote. Um, you can attend that open house and they are at 3466 Progress Drive, Suite yep. 111 in Salem. Oh, so, fantastic. Thank you for looking at that because I didn't have the confirmation. Kathy and yeah. Claire were hoping to... Um, uh, do something because I know that the school they've been going out to the schools and things like that. So this is their last push. Right. Great. Right. So again, just, you know, and you can call Claire uh, Leal. She is the director at Bucks County SIL down in Ben Salem. Yep. And her number is 215-781-5070. And you can get in touch uh, with her there or Claire Leal at Bucks CIL. Uh, dot dot org. org right 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 so again open house on october 11th so anyone interested they also have something coming up uh it's january 21st 2025 it's a youth transition conference and you can email claire at claire leal at org or call her and you can register for that and i think it's just it's more of uh you know, students may be uh, phasing out of the programs in the schools. So whether it's looking for employment opportunities or just living opportunities. Uh, so it's January 21st. They're calling it the Youth Transition Conference. 
And I would encourage anyone, you know, that needs those type of services or just interested in finding out some more information uh, to attend that if you're able to, or at least um, call and get some information. So we'll have that, you know, in our meeting minutes and uh, you can always, you know, just look on the uh, website. So, okay. So I think, I mean, there's a lot of good stuff going on there. So I hope people are aware of that. So I don't know if we can maybe get that information more prominent on our webpage yep. or it's just, I'm not sure how many people go out to our webpage for that information. So I, I don't know if there's any other places that we could post something um, like that. Uh, they do have like a, a little flyer. I don't know, you know, a flyer that says youth transition conference and the date. So maybe we can put it in here. I can make some copies and, and just put it, you know, here or in the parks and rec uh because. Yeah, maybe the Parks and Rec. Abby, I mean, as a parent with younger children, it, fast forward, if you were looking at that for aging out, where would you be? Where would you look? I mean, is there any way that we can get the word out? Um, I get most of my information through the kids' schools. So. Okay. And, and Claire has been very uh, proactive on, on doing that. I mean, I was thrilled that she was going into Pensbury for the voting stuff and things like that. So That and then probably... Um, at that age, they would have a supports coordinator if it, if they had uh, if they were on the waiver list okay. through the Bucks County uh, Developmental Disabilities Program. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think most yeah most up until you would go th through the school system and all yeah. that support That's, first. Yeah, and then who goes up to? I think it's twenty two now 20, since okay. COVID, yeah. but. Um, yeah. Right. So. so this would be more for, you know, after the school system at age 22, which would be great, you know, right. for uh, looking for services there. So, okay. Okay. The next thing we have is the upcoming events is the 5k anyway, run, walk, and that's going to be held October 13th, which is this Sunday at Mackles Field at 8 a.m. It starts. They do need volunteers. So I, I'm going to be able to volunteer there from 7.30 to 9. I'll probably get there a little earlier, just, uh, to, you know, set up because I know some people get there uh, early and, you know, just to sign people in. So I know, I know Cynthia and Michelle couldn't come. Are you able to? Out of You're out of town. Okay. So I'll just let them know uh, right now that I'm available. So, okay. And I think it looks like it's going to be nice weather. So that's yeah, a lot cooler than july or yeah, august i i didn't i apologize I, i'm away but it's kind of i don't know if i'll make it back on sunday so yeah it's i mean it's hard it, you know yeah it's I'm a left. fun day yeah i mean i'm out of, i was out of town last week and then you know week after this so i'm just hitting it you know just happened to be hitting it okay i think we lost yeah. uh hold on for one moment we've lost uh cynthia so hopefully she can get back in here. Okay. Okay, so, uh, and that's all out on the Facebook pages and I've already gone online. You can make a donation. So, Cynthia, you're, you're, you can hear us, Cynthia? You can. She's muted. Yeah. Cynthia, you're muted. Yeah, sorry, I just lost okay. the internet for a minute. So okay. I'm at the okay. Welcome back. Um, so I just wanted to say that that also for the 5K anyway, run walk for anyone out there, you don't have to participate. Like you can go on and just make a donation also, and it does benefit for you know accessible uh, things in the in the township. All right, the next uh, we had sent uh, an email to Monica Tierney at Parks and Rec about the ADA transition plan a while back that, um, you know, Abby was gonna be willing to help with that. So Monica, you know, just with the pool and everything, the summer events, it gets kind of crazy for her. So she did email back in that in the next few weeks, she would like to set up a meeting between Rob, who is the program director, Robert uh, Vandergriff, I believe his name is, and, um, you know, set up an appointment that we can, uh, maybe you and I can go over and meet with them because there's a bunch of other stuff we probably need to go over and then uh, get, and that's not just the ADA, that's the ADA programming that I'm trying to talk about. The ADA transition plan, you know, we were just updating um, everything that we had done 
uh, maybe five years ago, but the big right. part that we didn't get to was the ADA programming um, part of their, the parks and rec, you know, activities. So we'll, we'll go and meet with them. And then also in that ADA transition plan update that we sent to Monica uh, and the parks and rec, we had included some items, not just, not just updating the ADA transition plan, but kind of items that we wanted to see get done a little sooner. We thought that those were uh, maybe more maintenance type of things. So when we meet with her, maybe we can just go over those um, and see if, see if they can do some of this ongoing maintenance uh, on some of the projects uh, that's, you know, maybe more important to get done now. And I think that was it. You know, even like putting a handicapped porta potty over at Skyler, you know, tennis mm -hmm. courts right now, it's just a regular. So our recommendation would be if you're only going to have one, make it, you know, an accessible porta potty. So something like that's not really, I don't think that is in the ADA transition plan update. That's more something we'd like to see, you know, immediately. So we'll go ahead and, and do that. All right, just an update on Memorial Park Playground. Uh, if you watch the Parks and Rec meetings online, you can get some information on that. Uh, but I know, uh, I think we lost, we lost Cynthia again. Uh, right now, if you go up there, I believe they've already started to, you know, do some replacement of the wood fence and some sign signage. They're replacing and painting some of the equipment. There. No, I think she's. Think she's there and they're doing uh like the electrical yeah. box they're painting they're doing mulch is being replaced with seed up to the playground surface and landscape maintenance and the only thing is the surface i'm not sure exactly the date that they were going to put that in uh we'll just i think it's going to be this year this fall and then the, the only thing that will not be done at no scheduled date is the shade and the walkway to the bathroom so that's just something that um you know, is is not, is, they don't have the money to do right now, the shade. And I think that's just something we're going to have to look into next year if we can fundraise, but I don't think it's going to be in the budget. Uh, you know, I'm not there. I know they're working on the budget this fall. So I just keep my eye out to see if there's going to be funding for that. Um, but we'll have to see what we can do. Lisa, are we able to write it? I mean, can you work with the parties that be on a grant proposal on something? Oh, or no? yeah, absolutely. I mean, I'm just not familiar with doing that, you know, grant writing or, you know, asking yeah. for grants. So, uh, you know, they're always looking for, I know that Monica has a, a long list. So maybe there's yeah. one, go talk with her. Maybe there's a particular grant that she's aware of that might fit um, kind of with our mission you know so maybe there's a not necessarily a store but maybe a uh, you know somebody that has something that they'd like to to do with the disability advisory board um we can we can kind of pick her brain because she's i know they have a, a long list of grants that are probably out there that we could uh, apply for yeah that's what i was thinking especially with a lot of people moving in and out businesses that have been supported with the lower make field, you know, so. Now we did give her last time, remember, you know, our, when I went up there to look what kind of shade structures we might need and where yeah. it might be placed, because we're just not gonna be able to do the whole thing. So uh, hopefully, you know, they still have that information, you know, what our proposal is and if they have to do it in stages, you know, where could they prioritize first? Right. All right. The other parks and rec projects that I was following, uh, the bike paths, they're looking to do around $70,000 in repairs each year. So it sounds like a lot of money, but it's really not that, you know, with, I don't know how many miles of bike paths we have. Um, it's a lot. So, you know, they're, they're not going to be able to get everything done. So I know, you know, last time I did give her an email to where I thought, you know, try to, do the bike paths that are the most used that would make sense to you know whether it's going to Pricket preserve now right i mean there's going to be a lot of people walking to the new restaurants and uh shopping you know apartments there um all the way to the makefield glen and rose hollow area right there's you know so to me 
there are pockets of our township that has the majority of residents that live. Um, I'd like to get, I would love to see, maybe I should ask uh, someone in the township, like how many people live along Township Line Road? I mean, really from the edge, well, if I, Stone, I, Brookstone, right? <laughs> I'm gonna I'm gonna upset somebody here, but I'm allowed to because I'm leaving. Um, I, I I think it, and this is not us. This is not the powers that be at this table, but the powers that be that make these decisions of the influx of communities being built and the maintenance, like the Rose Hollows. All these people, it should be a point two five percent of whatever's done. And then we roll that money back into the maintenance of the, the bike paths, but that's way above my pay grade. <laughs> yeah. I mean, if you're talking $75,000 a year to maintain it, which is like, what's the revenue rateables on the community? I mean, there's a, there's a lot of ways that you can craft this with the developers who are making Uber bucks, especially with what real estate is going for in this township today. So I don't think that that's a no-brainer. It's not. It's 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 an easy fix. Yeah, yeah. We should get the new developers to not only do maybe the paths that are, you know, directly not on. Not only the new developers, the old developers. You got Deluca coming in, Shady Brook. You got um, Reeland's got Rose Hollow. You got the, you know, you got Toll Brothers who's doing X. I mean, a point oh one. Wow of whatever on a million dollar property, a condo is going for $600,000 on township lag mode. Yeah. It's so, not a lot. But, right. So I think the best thing that we can do is if you do see a dangerous situ situation though, maybe to alert, you know, the township, yeah. that particular area. So they can focus on the areas that really need it where a stroller or a wheelchair is gonna get caught in there and be a danger, you know, to yeah to li to it's a liability for somebody right yeah yeah right yeah. right so we can just uh continue to do that so i i i have done that this year so i'll just continue mm -hmm. doing that ongoing yeah um, the, uh, kids go ahead yeah sure does anybody know the history of um the bike path on big oak road you know it's not continuous and it doesn't go down to the uh, Shoprite Center or anything it stops. No, um, I mean, uh, I mean there's that section that is broken there near Stony Hill. Big uh, Oak, and I mean, uh, if you ask some of the old timers, I think that the stipulation of building those bike paths was when the developers came into the Lower Makefield, they were asked to create certain things. So that mm -hmm. might be one of the Big Oak to Stony Hill. I mean, there's a lot of stuff. I don't know. I mean, from a historical maybe, perspective. Maybe predates the developments. Yeah, I see what you're saying. Yeah. Well, it was that? asked to be put there mm -hmm. as the development was being approved. Similar to like Makefield mm -hmm. Park was asked to be put there when the developments were built around the park. Mm -hmm. Yardy Hunt that. is one of the oldest Toll Brothers, if not the first one. And I learned this when I was working on the historical commission. That was a prototype for Toll Brothers. Which one? Which one Yardley was that? Hunt. Oh, Yardley, Yardley Hunt. Hunt. Yeah. 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 Up on the north end. Yeah. 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 So they I mean, there's that. That's why I kind of like I'm thinking out of the box. Like there's at seventy five thousand dollars when. The majority of these now, these townhouses on Rose Hollow are probably 600,000 K. Um, there's an easy way to pave that and make sure that it doesn't hurt anybody in the community. Right. It, it, it doesn't really matter what the prices are going for now. It really, the bike paths are put in when a development is first created and then it's up to LMT to maintain to, them. To That's maintain it. Right. Yeah. So you can't go back to the original builder. The um, and just around Shoprite, you know, there is it. You cannot cross. They cannot put a crosswalk at that uh, Big Oak in Oxford Valley. It's too dangerous for anyone to walk. Uh, there, you know, too many lanes. So you can't 
you know, they didn't put any sidewalks coming from like the Regency that's on that side uh, coming up to the Oxford Valley light because they do not want anyone crossing there. So that's, you, you cannot cross there. Mm -hmm. So. Okay. There's not even one of those things like we couldn't even put one of those things like they're doing up on like on Woodside where you stop and it's lights up and. Oh, um, not, not at that. That's, that's too, too dangerous. dangerous. Yeah. Oh, okay. They, they have that down. There's a safe way to get now from the Regency that's over on the other side of Big Oak Road to the uh, old Regency section, I'll call it, uh, they did a whole bunch of work, you know, along there. So they can cross Big Oak Road now there and then kind of get to their development. So, um, yeah, there's no need. You, you, we don't want anyone crossing at that intersection. It's dangerous enough for cars. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I know. yeah, yeah. So, no, that's never going to happen. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So that's the bike pass. So we'll just keep uh, keep up on that. For Kids Kingdom, I just wanted to bring that up because, you know, we were discussing that last uh, meeting. And uh, I know if you listen to the Parks and Rec Board, you know, it's well beyond its anticipated useful life. That equipment is deteriorating. You know, it's around 30 years old, I guess. It's outdated. It doesn't meet, you know, today's standards for playgrounds. So th they are actually going to do a large capital campaign. So you're talking about funding and grants. They're yeah. going to have to do that because the estimated cost is 2.75 million. And, you know, they, they're going to have to come up with some funding for that, uh, get the community involved. And the thing, the nice thing is, is when Kids Kingdom was built originally, it was a community uh, event. Like everyone came out and helped build that playground. So, mm -hmm. you know, I guess they're going to be looking for something similar, you know, not that people can come in and, and probably do the work anymore, but at least maybe helping with whatever they can and then also fundraising. So, you know, they wanted to do the playground, the pavilion and the bathroom modification. So everything's kind of joined in one. It's one big happy park. You can get to everything, you know, including the picnic, you know, part of it, because uh, right now it's kind of separated um, and it's not easily, you know, accessible. So but this is going to take a couple of years. So this is not going to help happen soon. And that's why I was saying with when we meet with Monica, if there's anything that we think is a, you know, big concern that we want to yeah. address sooner, you know, they still have to maintain it for the next couple of years and keep it safe. So, um, you know. Now's the don't. time, though. Now's the time to put it in the motion, right? The plan. Yeah. Yep. Yep. So that'll, I mean, that's, you know, if you go to any town now, they, it seems like they all have these big, new playgrounds so they're kind of going to look around and, and take uh you know i think the one up in doylestown i can't remember pride okay. park or uh, castle, castle. castle yeah yeah so it seems like these playgrounds are getting bigger and better but yeah with a price tag of 2.75 million you know but we know things cost a lot more the other projects we're just going to continue to monitor there's really no updates on the pool bathrooms uh, you know, I don't know what's going on with any pool renovations. I know they were looking at that in 2020 or 2021, uh, just coming up with a master plan. But there's, again, probably no funding for that. The Macclesfield project is waiting on the written plan to go to the Board of Supervisors. That was, you know, a huge project that they've been working on for the past year. Um, I think it kind of hit the brakes. Uh, uh, I think they have to do maybe two parts, something more uh for, to meet the current needs, right? And then something for the future to really kind of park do you want it to be? I hear somebody's doggy. <laughs> Not here. Uh, uh, I'm mute. It's, it's, it's <laughs> That's easy. okay. Uh, no update on the community center handicap door and veterans park. Uh, they're going to present something to the board in the upcoming months. Uh, so, in the, so that's fine. Um, is there anything else? I think that was it from the Parks and Rec. And that's it. So do we have any update on the building plans for the township? Okay. So Not right I'm now, aware of. yeah, the only project that's really going on is Pricket. Yeah. And if you've been up there, I mean, they're moving 
really quickly on some of the outer buildings. Yeah. Oh, yeah. It was there today. Okay. At the grocery store and they were working. Buildings are going yeah. out very quickly. Yeah. So I think uh, the only thing Jim Majewski had uh, said to me today was they are really putting in some of the sidewalks. That's There's like the little community area. So they're building the sidewalks to the restaurant and uh, but they put in some ballards. Is that how you say ballards? Like those poles? Uh, on the so parking somebody lot? can't drive. So somebody can't, yeah, accidentally drive into a building. They put it right in the handicapped spot. <gasps> so they oh actually God. are taking it down. So, you know, it, it's people, I think somebody just said, oh, it should it go here? And they're like, yeah, put it there, you know, but it wasn't in the plans. And it was literally like right where the striping was for the handicapped parking. So, you know, so at least I feel good that Jim, you know, they did notice it and they, they did it. It yeah. right away. So I think that's, um, you know, so I think I'm going to try to go up there a little bit more often, maybe now yeah, that they, over to the, like, yeah, construction area, yeah, but... yeah, yeah I because they, I don't know what's, right. I mean, they've got the foundation before I left was like all up near the barn. I know the barn's going to be the restaurant the for it. It's starting. Um, yeah. Mr. It's, Prickett's old house is going to be a restaurant too. So Jim didn't um, say there were any plans on that yet. So I've heard something, but nothing's probably been proposed. Similar to the um DeLuca track that's being sold to Fleming. It's all nothing's been put down on paper, but I've I've kind of heard what that might be, but I don't think it would relate to a lot of stuff. And it's it's definitely a year or so down the road. Okay. Because so, yeah. so I was just, I was looking at resident stuff, what it might be. So um, I don't know what I don't know when that's going to happen. Yeah. Okay. So nothing new there, and nope. then um, I think that's it. So any new business? Anyone need to been around? Notice anything that we need to address? Nothing. Okay. Mm -hmm. So for our meeting schedule, I think, so we have the the run on Sunday, and then I know the veterans, they're going to have their Veterans Day parade. So, you know, everyone should attend that if you're available. I think I'm away that weekend. And then um, I think right now we'll camp, we won't hold a November meeting for a meeting schedule. And maybe we'll just put on hold, we'll schedule December's, but if there's really nothing going on, I know, we'll, you know, we'll, we'll meet. Yeah. If we really don't have to give an update in December, we can wait till the January meeting because we have to meet in January to do the reorg. And, you mm -hmm. know, so so if we feel like we don't need to meet in December, we won't. Uh, we can always cancel. But I'll go ahead and schedule it, get it on the calendar, and then we can cancel if we don't need it. And then we'll make sure we just meet in the January. So January would be um, whatever that date is. So if that's OK with everybody. Yep. It It is. I mean, I, I should hypothetically in the perfect universe um january and february would be it for me so hopefully we'll get some folks to right and so just for that process it, as soon as you know a date that you're going to be leaving um just send a term you know that you need to uh i'll, I'll write it for, for think of the word. leave the I board know. send in your resignation to you know <laughs> to give to the township manager okay so we, i don't think don't i can do leave, i can't, so do, I can't do the meetings from massachusetts or i would stay no, with you guys have to be an lmt resident i know i know i know that's right but i mean i wish you luck you know in selling your house so i know that's very stressful so oh my gosh uh, it's so like yeah. so it's uh sooner but, sooner is better for you yeah but, i will i will yeah. all right so do i have a meeting to adjourn i move I'm very tired today. So yeah, do I have a Cynthia's motion? doggy is a journey in the meeting. He's right. barking. <laughs> Thank you, Abby. Do I have a second? I... Okay. Yeah. All right. And all in favor? Goodbye. <laughs> See ya. Bye. Bye-bye. I have to figure out how to stop this.